Hi, I'm Jay Martin with Martin Bionics, and we're going to be taking a cast of the hammock casting stand for a new bikini socket. Uh, so I've got Whitney here, um, and uh, we just fit her with the bikini socket uh, this week, and uh, doing phenomenally well with the new prosthetic. So we're going to recast and show this, this process here. Um, so the hammock casting stand is uh, really a great way of capturing the contouring for a bikini socket. The old traditional method of casting for, for just a hip level socket, um, conventional casting methods, is you sit on a hard table, you have blocks that push in at 45 degrees, um, and then you modify like crazy to try to capture something that resembles the patient's body. This is a much more effective ap approach. So similar to like if we went to the beach and you put up a hammock between some palm trees and you fell asleep in that hammock, and then I snuck up behind you and laminated the hammock. That hammock would be just as comfortable at being uh, fabric or being rigid as long as the contouring was the hammock shape. So that's what we're doing with the hammock casting stand. Is this, re this resembles, this is the bikini socket fit. So you'll know exactly how the socket should fit and feel before you ever put plaster on the patient. Um, so having just been fit with the bikini oh, yes. socket, the, the cast felt like the final socket? It did. So it did. It's amazing. These, these paddles are the anterior and posterior uh, paddles of the bikini socket. Um, this just provides a stabilizing piece for our hammock to sit within. And then we're literally going to stretch a fabric hammock within this uh, space. And that hammock shape is the shape of the bikini socket. Um, so we should have a full conformity to the, conformity to the body. Um, we're de-weighting the ischium. We have no point-specific ischial loading as in the conventional socket where you hit that hard distal end with that ischium, which becomes pretty sensitive over time. Um, here we're just capturing the hammock shape, so the, the fabric is conforming to match to the body. Um, the mesh that we're using, this comes out of some work we did on the NASA program in, ma in making uh, Iron Man-like exoskeleton suits for space and military applications. And this mesh has this diamond pattern, and those diamonds can can flex. The material has no stretch, but that uh, the flexing of that diamond pattern provides excellent three-dimensional contouring around the, around the body. So we're going to put this material within the hammock casting stand, capture that hammock shape, and then uh, that's going to provide our, our fit for the bikini socket. The first step that we're going to do with this is we're going to make the hammock casting stand match to Winnie's body shape. So we want these paddles, tops of these, to come up to typically about the belly button level. That's going to be a different height for different people, but that's just a good starting point. Uh, the ASIS um, of, the, uh, of the pelvis is really as high as you really need the bikini socket because you're just really capturing the pelvic movement within. Um, so it's fine to have these up a little higher. You want the patient at the end of the day to be able to bend over and tie the shoes and not have any massive impinging. So that's a good starting point with this. You want this to be parallel, moved over towards the center line of the body, um, and then just have the right AP compression. So you don't need a lot of AP compression. Just a little bit is fine. Just enough to give some conformity, some capture. You don't want to squeeze too tight and actually push them back out of the socket. And you don't want to be too loose to where you're just not getting good anatomical capture. So um, just moderate uh, capture there is fine. Um, the uh, angle of this can be adjusted and you just depending on the body shape, usually these are pretty parallel together. Um, and the fabric within is going to have a slightly different shape than the paddles that will themselves. So this really becomes your palm trees and your fabric hammock is going to sit with it. So all of the adjustments on this can be made simply with a little Allen wrench, and you can slide everything in any direction you need to. So that should be pretty easy. Uh, let's go ahead and have you step into this. This is already uh, positioned to probably a pretty good height for you. So the hammock casting stand sits on the parallel bars. So if you're needed higher or lower, just simply move the parallel bars up or down. So we have, uh, looks like a pretty decent capture. This comes up to a good height. Um, and then right now she's sitting on the, the bottom plate. We'll put the hammock in and actually lift her off of that bottom plate. So let's go ahead and play with the hammock itself right now. So you can step back out. I may loosen these up just a little bit and give you a little bit more space. That may have been just a little bit snug on you. So quick and easy adjustments with the element just. All right, so now we're going to put the fabric hammock in. I just got an oversized piece of fabric. We'll end up cutting off the extra. And the fabric can Velcro to the paddles. I'm going to position this in here as a good starting point. It's getting probably pretty close. Okay. 
this one up over the lateral side. All right. Well, let's have you go ahead and stand back into this. Let me make sure the, the mesh doesn't get pushed too far over. Lift up just a little bit for me. Slide that back over. There we go. Back down. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we have that fabric mesh all the way underneath her. Now, is she still sitting down here a little bit? Actually, we're, oh, there we go. So we need to tighten this up some. So the way I'm going to do that, you, you can actually stay right there. Okay. I'm just going to tug on this, lift up just a little bit, pull that a little bit tighter, back down, velcro's back in place. Simple as that. So that lifts you up a little bit. Maybe pull a little bit more from the back, back down. Okay, good. So it looks like you're, we're suspending you a little bit better. I'm going to pull this back over, lift up, grab the, the mesh. Pull back over and the back in. All right, there we go. So that, that mesh can get pushed over sometimes. So you wanna make sure it goes all the way underneath. Um, now on the medial side of the socket, this is the medial aspect of the socket here, lateral side over here. If you wanna provide a little bit of cupping, um, kind of down underneath the, the ischium, now you don't really need real aggressive ischial containment. Nothing needs to jab up in, in there. But if you want to just have a little bit of cupping, simply take the medial aspect of the mesh, pull it a little bit tighter, and the mesh itself will, will curl up a little bit there on the middle side. So let's do that. I'm going to come over to this corner, and I'm just going to give this a little bit of a tug right there. Buck her up back down. Do the same on this one. Up just a little bit, and buck her up back down. Okay, so we've given a little bit more uh, capture. You can see we're, we're off. I can slide. I can see light underneath. Um, so you're literally suspended in a hammock at this point. Um, how's that feel? Good. Okay. Good. So pretty fast and easy. Now here on the lateral side, excuse your elbow there. Uh, I'm going to bring this lateral side in closer to her body. So the loose Allen screws. I don't need this super tight. Just kind of maybe contacting is, is enough. So uh, now that I have this lateral side tight, I'm going to bring the fabric over and just Velcro that back down. The lateral wall of the bikini socket really just needs to come up to where the limb, or the socket shape goes vertical. So once we pass vertical on this lateral side, we don't need it. So if it's, you can't pour water into it and have actual weight bearing support there, it's really not doing anything. So the lateral wall of the socket is probably going to be way down about this level, pretty low. This is just holding the fabric to achieve that contouring to match to the body shape. Now, if there's any little puckering of material, I can just take these corners, give that a little tug, velcro back down. Back here, I'll do the same as well, puckering back here so I can just take the corner of that material, velcro it back down. And that actually looks really good. So this is where we're doing the bulk of the fitting process for the bikini socket is here. The cast shape should be the final socket shape. There really shouldn't be a lot of difference between the two. Now maybe you have a couple nuances um, of you know little trim line adjustments or whatnot, but it's really pretty consistent to be the same. So I'm going to cut off the extra fabric just to get it out of our way. So I've pulled the fabric around the front side, velcroed it down right here in the front. That way it just holds the fabric a little bit further over on the medial side. I think the shape looks really good. Again, it's very distal land. I can see light down through here. Um, so we're not sitting on a hard surface. We're sitting literally just into a hammock. So this shape is our final socket shape. From the cast, we'll literally just smooth the cast, take the wrinkles out, and then that'll be it. So let's go and get ready for casting. Um, I'm gonna wrap you up in some saran wrap mm -hmm. to keep you clean, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put plaster over the outside of the fabric mesh. So instead of wrapping the patient and stepping back into the hammock casting stand, we're gonna establish the fit exactly where we want it. We'll check it one more time after I wrap you up, and then we'll literally just put plaster over on the outside of this in between the paddle and the mesh and just stick plaster to the mesh. Once that sets off, then we're done. And that's our bikini socket fit. Okay. So you're gonna go and step out for me. Perfect, and this should look largely like a bikini socket at this point. The first bikini socket that I fit using the hammock casting stand method, I had already developed the bikini socket um, and used to use the sitting on the hard table and the blocks method. And I was working on the NASA program at the time, and there was um, a patient I was working with who had a very sensitive ischium. He just couldn't take pressure there at all. And made a great fitting bikini socket for him, but he was still getting a little bit of pressure there under the tuberosity. 
And so um, I had this idea, so working with an, on the NASA program, had this mesh material with me at the time, and said, so what if I took that bikini socket and I put a fabric hammock within the, his existing bikini socket? And so I put a little Velcro on the top of the anterior and posterior wings and um, stuck the mesh in just exactly the way I've done here, and two fascinating things happened. The first was that he um, was not touching anywhere in the bikini socket that I made for him. Now, we had a check socket, I could see through it, and his limb shape was entirely different because the hammock was compressing the tissue different than how I had modified the socket. So it seems reasonable. Um, the second and more fascinating thing that happened is that he could actually walk and was really stable. So he was effectively in a fabric hip level socket by about 90% by surface area, all fabric. And he wasn't swinging around as you'd expect moving. There was really a lot of stability within the, within the design and was incredibly stable. And so that became the, uh, the, the birthplace of the hammock casting stand. And, uh, and so now we just capture the shape and um, in the stand itself, and this becomes the final socket shape. So really pretty incredible um, uh, casting method. So let's go ahead and get, uh, get some strand wrap around and get you all clean. All right, slide back into the hammock casting stand. I'm gonna hold the fabric to keep mm -hmm. it all the way over. That rear one's supposed to be. Yeah. Can you get in a little bit further? Mm -hmm. There we go, that yeah. looks good. All right, does that feel about right to you? You can slide in just a tad bit more. There we go. Okay, perfect. So I want to make sure that the, the mesh hammock is all the way over to midline still, because that's going to encompass where our medial uh, trim line comes to. Looks like everything's fit real well. We have the right AP compression. Our fabric hammock is pulled nice and snug. There's no puckering in the corners. Again, otherwise I just pull a corner and tighten it down. It's velcroed in place. I think we're ready. So these are really pretty simple casts to take. I'm just going to get the rigid plaster splints and I'll make a few splints that are about the size of what the bikini socket's going to be. And I'm just going to stick these right to that fabric. I don't need it to be very thick because when the cast is over, she should be able to step right out of it and, um, and the plaster is going to stay in the hammock casting stand. I'll make a couple splints that are a little bit smaller and I'll use these to slide up underneath the uh, anterior and posterior sides. So we're not going to need any cut strips. We're not going to need to wrap anything around or by. We're literally just covering the, the fabric here. Now that we have our splints, I'm going to go ahead and dunk them in water. And all I'm going to do here is lay the splints over is over the fabric and stick it down. So it should, should stick pretty well to this fabric. Just get it kind of worked in a little bit. As long as we cover the entire surface area of the fabric, we should be in good shape. So you have to kind of work the fabric or work the plaster up underneath those paddles a little bit. A little bit tricky, but just slide your hand right up in there and it should work right into place. Velcro this a little bit right here. So I'm slide this in. I can just work this all the way up to the top. The pressure from my paddle is going to hold that in place. I'll do a little bit more down this corner. All I'm doing is covering up my, my fabric socket, making the hammock rigid. Again, like if I snuck up behind you and laminated your hammock on the beach, just making it solidifying the shape that we know is contoured perfectly to the body. See one little spot right up in this corner. We could use a little bit more. Let's stick this right back under the paddle. As long as it sticks to the fabric, then it's to the right shape. Now this, this plaster is still a little bit soft here, so we're still basically sitting in the fabric hammock. Does this right now feel like your bikini socket that you have? It does, yeah. Pretty similar, yeah, isn't that amazing? It, so It's distributing the weight all around, it's amazing difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So just the same as if you're sitting in a, laying in a hammock on the beach, the fabric hammock, if you solidify that shape, is just as comfortable because it's so well contoured to the body. De-weights any point-specific loading, eliminates any point-specific loading, um, and spreads that load over a broader surface area. So while these, the bikini socket is a third of the size of a conventional socket, but I would argue that we're distributing the forces over a broader surface area than a conventional bucket hip socket. A bucket hip socket is larger, but it has more point-specific loading. You're loading more in the ischium, oh, yeah. loading more on the very distal end, and you're not, it, it's, it's less of an even weight distribution. Whereas here we have a smaller surface area, but it's even weight distribution everywhere. So there's no point-specific loading on the ischium, um, and uh, really makes it, just, uh, that's what makes it so comfortable, just the same reason the hammock is comfortable on the beach. So once this plaster sets off, then this effectively is our final socket shape. We'll smooth up the cast um, and then uh, make that out of a thermal and stiff check socket is what I typically use, or if the train stiff or anything similar to that. Buyback is typically a little bit too brittle, a little bit too flexible. So like a thermal and stiff type of plastic. Um, and then mount the hip joint. The same alignment procedures as what you would do with a conventional hip socket. Um, same location, same biomechanics. Um, and then just add the iliac, crest, the iliac crest stabilizers, which you're going to mount on the, on the anterior and posterior paddles here. Um, you're going to take the most proximal medial and lateral corners of that, so here and here, and drill a quarter inch hole, same front and back, and that becomes your mount for the iliac crest stabilizers. You can mount the sound side the sound side, iliac crest stabilizer, a little bit lower than the prosthetic side. So this side you can mount in the upper corner, and you could mount the sound side one an inch or two lower. That basically changes the line of pull to the more lower half of the socket, and then pulls the socket into the sound side. So if you have a really severe hemipelvectomy level, for instance, where you have just a 45 degree slope and no seat to sit into, and you tend to slide out of the socket, um, then by mounting that side a little bit lower helps pull the socket into the sound side limb and you can't physically uh, slide out of it. Likewise, you could actually take a third iliac crest stabilizer for a really severe case. I don't normally do this, but you can um, in those severe cases. And so you have the two iliac crest stabilizers at the trochan or, or sorry, at the um, um, uh, iliac crest level. And then you could do a third stabilizer at the trochan level on the sound side and that effectively becomes a belt attaching to the distal half of the bikini socket and literally holding that into the body. I typically only do that on a really severe hemipelvectomy level case. Otherwise, there's negligible difference between a hemipelvectomy level and a, and a true hip disarticulation level uh, fitting. The sockets look the same, they fit the same, they cast the same, everything's the same except for maybe your mounting positions of that electro stabilizer. Now, if you have a hemipelvectomy level, that is a really severe case to where you're missing the iliac crest, there's you know, just the body shape, there's nothing to physically grab a hold of. In most cases, even with most semi-pelvectomy levels, the iliac crest stabilizers do a great job of capturing that control over the body. But if you don't have that ability because of just the anatomical contouring, um, I'll take like an Under Armour t-shirt, a stretchy lycra or spandex t-shirt, get it about a size too small, um, and we have some little clips that you can wind the fabric of that shirt through, kind of like a backpack buckle. And then those clips can connect that shirt to the socket. So then I'll take two points on the socket, and literally you're clipping the shirt down to the socket. Um, and that becomes light suspenders. But instead of having two straps over the tops of the shoulders, which just that weight of the two straps just is not comfortable, the, the, spread, the load spread of that spandex shirt spreads the forces 360 degrees around the torso, and so it's really negligible force over the tops of the shoulders, and that helps hold the prosthetic on. That can be a great way to manage those really challenging cases, but otherwise, uh, you know, most socket fittings are going to be um, just the two iliac crest stabilizers. So this looks like it's all set up. We should be able to just step right out of it. You can slide right out and have a seat, and here's our bikini socket. So we literally have our shape. Looks like we'll just need to smooth it up a little bit. And then, uh, and then we're done. So uh, this looks really good. Um, I'm going to, when we pour this up, I'll tape up just the, the stand itself, leaving the cast in the stand. Um, we'll tape up the stand, uh, pour plaster in with our pipe so we know what vertical is. 
the bikini socket shape, it kind of slants over to a side. So the you know, midline is here, but most of the socket is over on this side, of course. So you can get disoriented when you're gunking it onto the hip plate. So draw some alignment lines, know what vertical is, know what horizontal is, put your pipe down the middle so you have an orientation. Um, pull this out of a thermal and stiff check socket, trim out to the trim lines that you have. You can draw trim lines inside of here if you need. And then that's it, simple as that. So in donning the bikini socket, you can literally just step into it, wrap the inlet crest stabilizers around and just tighten the ratchet up. So you have full adjustability even throughout the day if you need to make adjustments, go to the restroom, whatever it may be. Um, donning and doffing is super simple. It really should be a pretty fast process. Um, and, you have, and you have full control over the fit. So every time you put it on, you can adjust that ratchet just to the right tightness so that it um, really feels the right comfort level for you. <clears throat> nice and fast. That's your band. That's great. This is your first day to even put it on. I know. Each one that clicks on the ratchet is about a millimeter or two of tightness, and which is a very small difference. So one click on the ratchet is, you know, call it one millimeter of circumferential tightness, and you can feel the difference. Oh, Every yeah. little click, you can tell. Oh, it's a, yeah. And so uh, users, they love the ability to really micro adjust that, uh, that fit in real time. So you got it on real fast and easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me show a couple of attributes on this. Would you mind facing this way for me? Oh. So on, on Winnie's socket here, we attached the two iliac crest stabilizers at the, at the same level. Now, we could attach the sound side stabilizer a little bit lower, maybe right about here, and that would give a line of pull to hold the bottom of the socket, kind of push it into her sound side limb, keep it from sliding out. You don't normally need that. You certainly can in some cases, uh, more for hemipelvectomy level fitting or if the slope of the limb is just such that they want to slide out of it, just lower that down or do a third alien crest stabilizer at the trochanter level on the sound side and then attach that across over to the midpoint of the socket, top to bottom midpoint, um, and, and that'll hold the, the limb in. Um, likewise, mind facing this way a little bit for me? I don't know. Um, in some cases, it may be helpful to take a, a small piece of Velcro, attach it on to the underside of this gray webbing, which is Velcro compatible, and then run it down and just attach it here. And that can keep these two from yawning apart. Depends on body contouring. You don't normally need to do that necessarily, um, but if the body shaping, here we have some really good capture over the other crest. If the body shape is such that you just can't get that same level of capture and these want to yawn apart a little bit, just add a little strap between here and here and that should be fine. Um, and if you don't mind facing this wall here, show the back side of the socket. Um, these are just attached with one anchor point and that works well. Sometimes I'll actually attach the cross connector, this gray strap with two anchor points on both of those. And what that does is it keeps the iliac crest stabilizers, these blue uh, pads, it keeps them and holds the orientation for them. So when you don and doff, they don't just kind of sink down. They, they really hold that position. It makes it a little bit simpler um, to grab a hold of that strap when you pull it around for donning. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, it's not a right or wrong, uh, but I do like to do that sometimes. So two anchor points here, two anchor points here. This strap comes with multi holes in the fitting process and just uh, extend it a little bit more, have the two holes before you, you know, cut it to the, the right size. The contouring, uh, we want to keep this top uh, as close to the midline as possible. This is as it was in the cast. Contouring um, uh, here on the lateral side is pretty low, so we don't need to come up and encapsulate real high. We can actually keep that really low. Um, and you can turn back and face me if you want. The hip joint alignment is just the same as it would be with a conventional socket. Real, no real difference there. I like to keep the socket as, uh, actually if you'll face this way one more time, I like to keep the socket as absolutely small and streamlined as possible, kind of like a race car. You get rid of every ounce of weight that you can. This socket is probably a third or less of the weight of a conventional level hip socket. Um, and the adjustability, these iliac crest stabilizers, you can fold them up and stick them in your pocket. They're so conforming. and so. Um, you just get rid of all of the structure and the mass of a conventional socket and it just conforms and matches to the body. You know, think of everything else in our world that, that we match the, um, a device to the dynamic human body. Backpacks, shoes, our clothes, car seats. Everything is designed to conform and match to the body. Self-adjustability like in a backpack is, is you know, in a shoe is, is really uh, key. Um, and so we're just integrating those elements into the socket. So there's a very low surface area. It's very cool, very breathable. 
You're not going to have the heat and sweat build up as you normally would. You don't need to wear prosthetic socks. You literally can just wear a pair of biking shorts. Some folks will sew that seam up or you can just fold the leg over. Do you just fold the leg over on yours? No, I sew You, yeah. you mm -hmm. sew yours? Okay. Um, so you can go either way. Um, it's about 50-50 on both and there's not a right or wrong on that. Uh, whatever works best for you. Um, and then uh, that's kind of all there is to fitting a bikini socket. They're really pretty simple to fit for both the hip and the hemipelvectomy level. And if you have any questions at all as you're working through bikini socket fittings, contact us. We can be a resource for you however we can help. Uh, love to serve and love to um, just make sure that your bikini socket fitting is optimized for the greatest comfort and functional outcomes of those that you're working with. So um, thank you so much and uh, wish you the best.